afternoon and welcome to the Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee. We are having a meeting on this beautiful Sunday in here and we thank all of those who have come to um, partake in it with us. And uh, we have an agenda that's been posted and I believe there is going to some extra handouts on what the agenda items are. And uh, leading the agenda is a discussion of FY13 Medicaid shortfall with Mary Mayhew, the Commissioner of the Department of Health and Human Services. Before we get underway with that, I would ask that we take a moment for the committee to introduce themselves. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aaron Prime, and I represent House District 18, which includes part of Anglo, part of Porno, and all of the town of Easy. Good afternoon. My name is Eric Jorgensen. I represent House District 115, which is Deering and Portland. Good afternoon. My name is Tyler Clark. I represent House District 6 in Aroostook County. And that's Fort Fairfield, Easton, Marcel, Blaine, Bridgewater, and Westfield. Good afternoon. I'm Mike Carey. I represent downtown Lewis and the House of Representatives. Welcome. I'm Peggy Rotundo. I represent House District 74, which is part of Lewis. And I'm the House Chair of the Appropriations. Good afternoon, Pat Flood, Senate District 21, Southern Kennebec County, including the town of West Gardner. Good afternoon, I'm Kathy Chase, and I represent District 147, which is most of Wells. Good afternoon, I'm Dennis Keschel from Belgrade. I represent House District 83, that includes Belgrade, Fayette, Manchester, Mount Vernon, and Vienna. Good afternoon, I'm Linda Stanhorn. I represent District 130, which is part of Gorham and part of Buxton. Good afternoon, I'm Megan Marcello. I represent House District 136, which is a part of Bedford. And um, welcome. My name is Dawn Hill. I proudly represent District 1 for the Senate, which is a gun with York, Kerry, Elliott, and South Burrick. And I'd also like to introduce you to Maureen Dawson to my right behind the computer screen. She is our legal analyst. And I'd also like to introduce Chris Nolan from the Office of Fiscal and Program Review. by myself to start, and uh, certainly as we get into this, I'm happy to bring up others, so. Sure. And if they come up and you'd like them to stay there, that is fine with us, so they're back and forth. Whatever works for you. Sure. All right. Thank you. Representative Rotundo. Commissioner, thank you for being here this afternoon. Um, we, we do have some grave concerns at program. 
Commissioner Millett explained that when he presented the change package? He did, I'm sorry. When he presented the change package, I, I don't remember anything about how we need to do this by the 20th of May, or else the agent just can't pay his bill. So I guess I was, I guess I did not understand when this was presented a week and a half ago that this situation was present. Well, let's, let's go back even farther. In February, members of this committee were alerted to the fact that as we were continuing to monitor the forecast, both in terms of expenditures as well as revenues, that there was likely to be some challenges for the remainder of the fiscal year. The letter is simply making clear, as we look at the accounts in the main care payments, when we are likely to begin running short. The May 28th date was when we thought or understood that a budget would need to be passed in order for our accounts to be fully funded to meet the payment cycle beginning the week of June 10th. So our June 12th payment is when we right now are forecasting we will run short and then will not have funds to meet the payments to providers for the last two weeks. We will not have adequate funding, but we begin to run short the week of June or on our June 12th cycle payment. Okay, so just, just so I'm clear, it is the, it's like $35.2 million is the amount that the Department of Defense needs to get to the end of this week? Consistent with what was in the change packets, correct. Representative Kerry. Thank you, Madam Chair. What is the, what is the amount needed for June 10th? 1.6 million is what we are forecasting currently for the shortfall for that week. Yeah, and how do, how do the successive weeks till the end of the fiscal year? And that is, again, these are estimates. It's difficult to forecast how claims will hit various accounts, but it would be 16 million the next week, 16 million plus 17 million for the last week. When was the May 28th date made explicit to this committee or anybody in the legislative leadership? May 28th date was our understanding from conversations with staff in the budget office. We understand that that date there may be some flexibility. Again, we were told it could take a week to two weeks. We understand that that can be certainly further discussed with this committee and Commissioner Millett would certainly be in a better position to comment on what needs to occur upon enactment in order for these accounts to receive the necessary funding. Right. I guess I'm responding to the governor's press person who described this as a friendly reminder. This is the May 20th, that's the first time that I've seen the May 28th date. This is not a lot of time. We're trying to make sure that we, I share the concerns about our ability to pay physicians, developmental disability providers, and we simply want to make sure that we have the necessary funding to make those payments so that we're not having to have any provider without the sufficient funds to pay their staff and have to be delayed in receiving those monies. And why was this brought forward since it's a change package to the biennial budget rather than as a supplemental budget, which could act with the, regardless of what the rest of the budget is, the process is going, this could be quickly initiated to meet the emergency that you're now bringing to us. Well, certainly this was, as Commissioner Millett introduced it, as part of our overall change package. I'm happy to respond further about what other options this committee may have, but this was brought forward as part of all the various changes, but clearly identified as a state fiscal year 13 need. I understand that. And that's, so you would be open to having this as a supplemental budget that could, that wouldn't hold the rest of the process over a barrel for this one point. I am here to respond to concerns about the challenges within the main care program and our need to ensure that we're able to appropriately pay for the services on behalf of the members of the main care program. I really can't comment on other approaches to managing the overall discussion with the budget. And I'm sure there are others here that can comment. Agreed. And finally, why, why not bring this concern to the committee and to leadership in the normal process that timing questions like this are typically brought forward 
I guess I have to say I'm perplexed. We've been in front of this committee and in front of the Health and Human Services Committee, and frankly, I would go back more than a year where we sat and talked about the underfunding, the gross underfunding of this program, and uh, for weeks debated the amount that we were requesting because we were concerned that, frankly, given the loss of the ARA funding, the reality that we are trying to pay our bills on time, and what we were seeing for a forecasted need in general fund dollars, that the program was not adequately funded. This, this should not be a surprise. The, the theme is not a surprise. The 11-day uh, due date is. Um, and I guess that's, that's the nature of the question I'm trying to understand is, um, is how we came to a place uh, where we're talking about a date that's less than two weeks away. Um, because I agree with you, this has been a recurring theme, and, and members of this committee have been have con have asked, and I'm sure will continue to understand kind of the nature of of these differences. I, I'm simply asking about the the um, the way that it's come forward in in a, in a rather brisk letter two weeks before, rather than in, in informal conversations and a from supplemental budget request rather than change back. There's a, a series of, of ways in which. Um, that I would have expected it to have given the way that this committee works well together and, and has been working with the administration. Okay, you're, you're asking me, and no matter uh, how you look at it, the end of the fiscal year is not that far away. Whether we're talking about our ability to fund the remainder of state fiscal year 13 or to begin a new fiscal year 14, simply drawing attention to when we begin to run out of money is something that is critically important for us to make other decisions about what payments won't be made. Those decisions have to be made sooner if we are going to start managing these cycle payments without the additional $35 million. 